Thank you, Colleen. Good morning. Welcome to the Uigo United Methodist Church, to everyone here in the sanctuary and those joining us online. We have a few opportunities for ministry this week. Uh, tomorrow, Monday, there are conversations with Nancy at 1 and 6.30 p.m. Please sign up in the back. Tuesday, September 26th at 10 a.m. is the knitting group in the chapel, and the trustees will be meeting at 7 p.m. Wednesday is at 9 a.m. is the men's group in the chapel, and from 5 to 6 p.m. is the prayer group. Thursday, September 29th, we have conversations again with Nancy, 1 and 6.30 p.m. Sign up in the back, and if you have anything you'd like to talk to Nancy about, she'd love to talk with you. Uh, Saturday, September 30th, probably shouldn't announce the baby shower. <laughs> That's by invitation only. Uh, let's see. Oh, in the back we have um, coming Sunday, October 15th, we have the uh, Tioga County Crop Walk for Hunger. 25% uh, of the money raised stays to feed hungry people in Tioga County. And last year we had 10 walkers, and we'd love to see 15 this year. And information and collection packets are on the back table. Please walk or sponsor a walker. And also on October 15th, Jennifer Milligan will be walking in the Breast Cancer Walk in uh, Upson Angle Park. And she has a sign-up sheet in the back if anybody would like to help her collect donations. Uh, on, uh, the Dorotheans will be having a bake sale on Saturday, October 14th from 8 to 10 a.m. in Fellowship Hall. The congregation is invited to also donate baked goods. All baked items are to be brought to Fellowship Hall by Friday, October 13th, between 1 and 3 p.m. Anything else? Uh, Chris Callen would like to come up. He has a few things he'd like to uh, discuss with us. I'm sure you'll be able to hear me. Good morning. Uh, my name is Chris Callen. For those of you that don't know me, uh, my wife, Kristen, and I are the treasurers for the Methodist Church. And this is a, a little bit of a follow-up to what Nancy was talking about last week, that um, in the general fund, which is one of the accounts that, that we oversee, um, we're experiencing a little bit of a, a financial bind if you might call it. Um, we have some, a couple of slides here. Uh, a linear graph that basically shows from 2023, your green line is the donations and income into the church. The red marking are the expenditures of the church. You can see by, when we did the graph, I knew the income would be somewhat of a roller coaster and that's how it is. It, it's, it, it varies from week to week, month to month. Some of the expenses follow the same pattern. Some expenses that the church incurs are seasonal, more for heat and electricity in the winter time. And you can see that by the red marks that early in the year, quite high on the expenditure list, especially two, two items of note, heat and electric, which for the first four months of this year, we spent probably over $10,000 on heat and electric. So we're, we're heating and providing electric to four buildings, the church, the Wesley House, Barton Building, and the Parsonage. The other item in, under properties uh, are property insurance. To insure all four properties has risen to about $11,200 a year. We, I've made some phone calls to the insurance company trying to get a gauge on what 2024 will be look like, um, but they're unable to provide that. It's too early, so I'll be calling probably around Thanksgiving time to just find out what, if any, increase might come for 2024. But as you can see, between the two lines, there is no, 
no doubt that the donations and income run consistently behind the expenditures. And, and so it's resulted in, in quite a, a large deficit for this year, around a little bit over $28,000. So that's something that, that we certainly have our eye on. <clears throat> um, Kristen, well, in particular, go, go back to that one. And, and just really what's, what's in part brought us here too is that green line from about May through August. May we had a very a fairly good month, but the, the three summer months, June, July, and August, have been particularly tough on the donation and income side. September is shaping up to probably in, be in the same ballpark, so that that's kind of contributed to our, our a little bit of our buying the reason that we're in that buying now. So, without just talking about expenses, we thought when we got into being the treasurers four years ago, we didn't realize everything that the church has a financial responsibility to. And so, re being real brief here, I will not spend a lot of time. We have handouts in the back, so we're going to leave those handouts for people to take over the course of the next weeks. doesn't matter. I encourage you to look at it, digest it at home. But some of the expenses that we run through are, are staffing salaries, pastor and our custodians. Our, um, we have a, uh, Nancy has a personal investment plan. And you can see that that is payroll deducted, so we, we deduct that from her pay, but still are responsible to send that in. Same thing with the health insurance. We have our other staff salaries. And then FICA and Medicare. So in addition to everything else, we're an employer. So we employ people, and when we deduct their federal, state, FICA, and Medicare, as an employer, you have to match their FICA and Medicare expenditures. So we have to do that as well. And covered understaffing, any, any substitutes that we might have. So Mike Willis, as you remember, came in August, that some, some substitutes require payment, some will forego that. Workman's compensation, that's a fairly small amount per year, about $155 a year. Under administrative, um, Another account that we, we are in charge of is Nancy's reimbursement plan. This is uh, common among ministers. This is a, a set amount of money that's provided for reimbursement of mileage, educational expenses, certain publications, that sort of thing. Any money left over from that reimbursement plan at the end of each year is returned back to the general fund. And I will tell you in the four years that we've been doing this between Pastor Jamie and Pastor Nancy, there's always been a sum that has been returned to the church. Properties, um, you know, like I said, stuff that we, don't, we didn't think about it at first, but heat and electric for the four properties. You have water, sewer, phone, property insurance, there's waste disposal and recycling, so the waste disposal, Nancy brings her own. She, the parsonage is just recycling. The church is recycling and garbage. She brings her garbage to the church. Any maintenance supplies that are needed for the custodians, that's paid for. And snow plowing. I have it at the bottom, but <clears throat> snow plowing, basically the sidewalk snow plowing, we were amazed at some of the bills that we saw for snow plowing. They can be quite expensive, and, it, and it's just, it, it opened our eyes. It, it's like, I thought, we, I thought there was a mistake in one of the bills, but it's, it's, it was no mistake. So that can be a high expense depending upon the winter that we have. So. Next, another area that we, that we contribute to is the Upper New York Conference. And under that, <clears throat> the first item, ministry shares, also known, you may have heard this term, apportionments. So the Upper New York Conference apportions a certain amount of money to each church. 
that is to be paid um, for that year. And they divide that into 12 monthly payments. So we get a monthly bill for all of the items that you see under the Upper New York Conference. And that includes also a retiree premium. That is health insurance for all retired clergy. There is a moving fund. So a moving fund pertains to churches that have had a minister for less than five years. So as an example, when Nancy moved here in July of last year, there's a moving, the reason all the churches pay the moving fund is to cover some of her expenses, maybe not all of them, but to cover them for all the churches within the conference. There is what we call a CPP or a Comprehensive Protection Plan. This is long-term disability and death benefit for eligible pastors within the conference. There is a CRSP, Clergy Retirement Security Program, which is a contribution, an employer's contribution, the church's contribution to ministers' pension plan within the New York Conference. The medical church share is health insurance premiums for churches that have full-time ministers. So that is part of our monthly billing. That is $1,200 per month. That is going to be rising. It just uh, We've been informed that that is going from, um, yeah, 14400 to 15200 100. So $720 increase. So those, everything from the retiree premium down to the medical church share, the way it was explained to me by Dave Ostrander, who did a very capable job being treasurer for 28 years, that has to be paid. The ministry shares should be paid, but we're never been fully told what happens if you don't pay them, but I'm sure the minister of that church probably might hear something. So. Moving down um, under office, so we have a the copier that's in the office is under contract. That contract is valid through February of 2025. I have contacted them about ending that contract but the buyout would be somewhat prohibitive. So we're, we're probably going to have to honor, you know, stay with that contract through February of 2025 and then make a decision on whether we need a copy or anything. We may not be able to afford that. There is printers that, the you know, with laptops and computers that can be printed too. So with the contract payment comes a maintenance fee. That's every month. Another area that we're looking at is the postage meter. We're on a lease. That's not too expensive, but maybe something that the church can do without. We really just need to have stamps. And we could eliminate some other expenses related to the machine itself. And then we have our postage and office supplies. That's everything from stamps to paper for the copier, um, ink, toner anything of that nature, that all has to be factored in. And lastly, church ministries. Um, this is everything. I, I try to come up with a few examples. The upper room booklets, that's something that the church provides. That's not a huge fee. Any communion elements. So Jamie and Nancy have purchased the communion cups that we use on Sunday. That's something that they get reimbursed for, but that comes under, under our church ministries. Any special music, such as the brass ensemble that was here at Easter time. Some charge, some may do it free of charge. We have a credit card service, an online credit card service called Banco. That's a $10 monthly charge to maintain that online system. And I just threw in the pledge envelopes. There, there is a fee associated with that as well. So. Um, but we've had many discussions uh, in our admin council, and uh, 
you know, we're attempting to take more of a proactive approach to the situation that we're faced with. Um, some of those, some decisions have to be made. Some are going to be more difficult than others. But we prayerfully request uh, that that any pledges, this is again reiterating what Nancy mentioned last week, any pledges out there that you may be behind on, would just consider making those pledges good by the end of the year. And those of us that, you know, that pay or, you know, pledge and pay, please maybe consider a small increase in your contribution through the end of the year. Um, like I said, we're, we find ourselves in a little bit of a bind here. Um, but this, this is all really in furtherance of the Lord's ministry at our church. And I thank you. Like I said, we have two handouts in the back. Feel free to take them at any time. We're going to leave them there. And if you ever have any questions, we are big on transparency. Let us know. If we can answer your questions, we will. If we can't, there may be a reason or we'll find the answer. Like I said, this was new to us four years ago. Not so new anymore. But I thank you for your time and your patience. Thank you, Chris. Um, so, yes, we just wanted to make you aware of uh, the, the current reality. And um, uh, and as, as uh, Chris just said, you know, ministry uh, costs money, and we want to be able to do the things that God is calling us to do. And so... Um, any way that you can respond will be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. And we're not going to panic because God is good. Okay? All right? God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. All right. Thank you. Is your able for call to worship? Oh, how our God loves us. May we live lives that give him the glory. Our Lord promises us his presence. Our hearts need to be troubled or afraid. Thanks be to our God. Now please remain standing for hymn number 577, God of Grace and God of Glory.
Having lifted our voices in praise, let us now turn our hearts to confession. Would you pray with me? Yes. Print it in your bulletin or on the wall. Merciful and almighty God, forgive us when we give in to fear instead of claiming and basking in your peace. We are so grateful that you put up with us in our humanness. We need the wisdom and courage that we just sang about. Help us to grow in you. We pray in the name of Jesus, who is the source of our peace. Amen. In silence, now let us confess our sins before Almighty God. Hear the good news. Jesus said, I have called you by name. You are mine, says the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, each one of us is forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. So I'm not seeing any kids out there. Um, so let us pray. Take this time to pray for the children. Okay? Gracious and loving God, we pray that you would bring us more and more children, that they could come to know the old, old story of Jesus and his love. To know that Jesus loves them no matter what. And so, Lord, Bring the children. Bring their parents. And may they all know your peace. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
As we come to our time of prayer, uh, do you have joys or concerns to share? Yes, Carol. You, you had a bone scan and there's no cancer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing that. We rejoice with you. I have something to say. Uh, my sister Barbara lives in Iowa. She had a bout with colon rectal cancer and she had her rectum removed. She has a stoma for the rest of her life. And uh, she said to me at the end of this month, which will be next week, she had, goes back to the urologist, and there's possible surgery, more surgery. So we, I need a prayer. Please. So Barbara. prayers for Barbara. Okay. Okay. Jeff, how's Bev doing? Is he there? No? Okay. She's doing good. Okay. Um, friends, it's a, it's a joy. Just just God's faithfulness, and and it's just it's just a joy, um, always and everywhere. Let's pray. Ever loving and living God, thank you for your presence here with us this morning. We are so grateful that we can gather together here in person and uh, through the wonders of technology to bind us together, Lord, as we have gathered to worship you. May we sense your presence with us in an unmistakable way. And therefore, to know your peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we continue to pray for this hurting world. We pray for President Biden and other world leaders. Grant them wisdom and courage for the living of these days. Bless our Bishop Hector Burgos and our District Superintendent Bob Colvick Campbell in the ways that they lead on our behalf. And Lord, bless the efforts of, of all those working for peace throughout the world and right here in our neighborhoods. And Lord, we pray for those in need of your healing, touch in body, mind, spirit, relationship, or situation. And we especially lift up baby Max and Donnie and Ann and Bev and Judy and Gerald and Chris and Judy and Dave and June and Tyler and Dick and Lorraine and Frank and David and Tim and Tracy, Eileen and Doug, Jerry, Shelley, Hugh, Renee. Lord, we thank you for for Carol's wonderful news, and we rejoice with her, and we pray for Bev's sister, Barbara, as she faces surgery at the end of the month. And may Bev's sister, Barbara, know she's not going into that operating room alone, but you are there with her. Lord, we pray for all who mourn this day. that you would bring the comfort that only you can bring. We pray for all of our shut-ins. We pray for the people of Maui, for those devastated by natural disasters and the Canadian firefighters. Lord, just bless the efforts of, of all involved in, in all of those areas.
And we continue to pray for the people of Sudan and Ukrainian migrants and, and migrants from Central America and just and the Ukrainian people themselves and for an end to this war in Ukraine. Lord, you have dreams for us, and we partner with you in those dreams. And Lord, I just pray that that you would um, raise up your people uh, to respond to the financial needs that we have so that we can carry out the ministries that you are calling us to do. We know you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And we are so grateful. So raise up your people to respond, Lord. And in the midst of it all, speak peace to our souls. There's no need to panic. You've got this, God. You've got this. Continue to use this congregation in mighty ways in this community. Thank you for the ways your Holy Spirit continues to work in and through this congregation. What a joy it is to serve you, Lord. Do continue to use us, Lord. Use even us. Just as you will and when and where. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, the Prince of Peace. And continue to pray as he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Acknowledging that all that we have and all that we are belongs to God, let us offer unto him his rightful tithe, our offerings, and ourselves. The ushers, please come forward.
Please remain standing for hymn number, next hymn number 2145 to be found in the faith we sing and up on the wall, I've got peace like a river. Please be seated. Our scripture lesson this morning is from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 27, and can be found in your Pew Bible on page 937. I'm oh, 39, sorry. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, 
and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. And they who have my commandments and keep me are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Susie. Pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds and our actions in response be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So a father and his son would make a habit of going fishing together. Year after year, it was their special time to talk and share things. Even when the son had grown and moved away, they would make special plans to go fishing together. Then the father died, but the son kept on going fishing, first by himself, then with his daughter. In those times of fishing, he would remember his father and the things that they had shared, and he would feel the love and presence of his father once again. Keep that in mind. In our scripture lesson from the Gospel of John that Susie read for us, we're reminded of some of Jesus' last words to his disciples prior to his arrest and subsequent crucifixion. There must have been some urgency on Jesus' part since he knew he was going to die soon. He must have wondered if the disciples were going to understand so that he would carry on, so they would carry on his mission and ministry in the world. Today, we're looking at the third installment of the series, Who is Jesus? The sermon title is The Peace of Christ in a World of Chaos. Friends, Jesus is our peace. We hear these words that Jesus said to his disciples that last night of his earthly life beginning in verse 18, I will not leave you orphaned. That was a common metaphor in the Greek to describe disciples left without their masters. Jesus' promise that he will not leave the disciples orphaned refers to the assurance of the relationship that he has with his disciples will not be compromised by his leaving them. His promise to return counters the perception of Jesus' death as abandonment of the disciples, even though they must have felt abandoned until they encountered the risen Christ. I will not leave you orphaned, verse 18 says. The RSV, the Revised Standard Version, puts it this way. I will not leave you desolate. How about that? Yeah. I will not leave you desolate. 
The King James Version says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you comfortless. That is the promise of our Lord. In a world filled with uncertainties and dangers, can such promises bring us hope? Trust so. See, Jesus didn't say he was going to clean up the mess we've made of the world. That wasn't the promise. Uh Uh-uh. Jesus did not promise the disciples that their master would escape crucifixion. That wasn't the promise. He did not promise everything would go smoothly. That wasn't the promise. What he said is you will not be left alone. The promise of Christ's presence through the coming of the Holy Spirit is for all believers in all generations, not just those who knew Jesus when he walked this earth. Can the disciples still love Jesus when he's gone? Can the next generation love him without having known and interacted with him on earth? The answer, of course, is yes, or we wouldn't be here this morning. The disciples can still love Jesus, but not by clinging to a cherished memory or by retreating into their own private experience of him. Rather, they, we, can continue to love Jesus by doing his work, keeping his commandments. The promise of a continued divine presence is made to the community. With the coming of the Holy Spirit, the revelation of God does not end with death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus. That, my friends, is good news. God continues to make his presence known to us by giving us his power and his grace to carry out his mission and ministry in Jesus' name. When we do these things that Jesus taught us, I believe we can then have an increased sense of his presence in and with us. Think back to the father and son who went fishing together. The father was no longer physically present, but was there in his son's memory and in his heart when he did the things that they shared. When we do the things that Jesus taught us, he is present here in our hearts and lives. When we reach out with the love of Christ to those around us, those we know and those we don't, Christ is present. Obedience to his will and his ways is not so much the proof of our love for him as it is the product or result of our love for him. May we live out the words of this song. They'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. So there's evidence of the presence of Christ in our lives as we live out our discipleship in gratitude seven days a week. Now, go back with me to the story of the son who went fishing after his father died. The analogy does break down because the father is not truly present. Just the son's memory of the father stirred by the sights, sounds, and smells of fishing. But Jesus truly is with us through the promised presence of the Holy Spirit. When we share Holy Communion or carry out Jesus' teachings, Jesus is there in our heart and soul, but not just as a memory. Jesus really is truly present by his Holy Spirit inside of us. Gary just sang so beautifully in this very room. Jesus is here in this very room. Some of Jesus' last words to his disciples before he died for our sins on the cross were these. I will not leave you orphaned. I will not leave you desolate. I will not leave you comfortless. I am coming to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. I have found Jesus' promised presence to be real and true. I hope you have too.
two artists vied with each other to see which could produce a painting that could de be depict the idea of peace. One painted a picture of a quiet lake way up on a mountain. A breeze was stirring and, and not a bird was flying, not a ripple disturbed the quiet waters. Initially, the first artist thought his scene was the truest picture of peace. The second artist painted a picture of a roaring waterfall with a mighty tree hanging over it. In the crotch of the limb, bending over the turbulent waters and almost within reach of the rising spray, he painted a tiny sparrow sitting calm and unperturbed upon her little nest. In the midst of the mighty roar, surrounded what seemed to be frightful danger, the sparrow hadn't a worry in the world. Her cozy nest was snug in the crotch of the almighty oak, her sanctuary. Which one was a more which one was more a picture of the peace of Christ? The scene of all being beautiful at rest? Or the bird even in the midst of chaos who is at rest? I think the latter. In this hurting, messed up, war-ravaged, terror-stricken, polarized world in which we live, let us hear Jesus' words to us as his 21st century disciples. I will not leave you orphaned. I will not leave you desolate. I will not leave you comfortless. I have said these things while I am still with you. But the Holy, the Holy, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. We are not alone, even when it may seem we are. The counselor, the advocate, the encourager, the comforter, depending on your translation of verse 25, in Greek means literally to call to one's side. Okay? In other words, Jesus is offering the disciples the promise of his presence through the Holy Spirit as their, our, helper, to remember all he taught them, us. Let me hasten to add that peace doesn't depend on our circumstances. Remember the sparrow in the artist's painting? Elizabeth Sherrill has written about an experience she had in North Carolina. She said, a sign near a mountain stream called attention to the slope of the bank. It explained that the V-shape can be wide or narrow depending on the material the bank is made of. Solid rock erodes to a steep-sided bank, while softer soil melts into a gentle slope. In either case, when the bank no longer tumbles into the river with every passing storm, it is said to have reached its angle of repose. Friends, do we have an angle of repose? Can we reach a place where the storms of life no longer threaten our stability? This is where we find God's undergirding strength, that peace which passes all understanding. When we rest in Him through downpour, drought, freeze, thaw, or put another way, through illness or the death of a loved one or an uncertain future or financial challenges in our congregation, whatever may come our way, have we found that position that nothing can shake? It's not easy, I know. But we need to stop. Just stop. And let Jesus give us His peace. Remember, verse 27 says, 
Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. He said, I do not give to you as the world gives. Boy, is that ever true. Thanks be to God. The world can't give us true peace, which is that peace in Christ that passes all understanding. Make no mistake, my friends, true peace is found only in Jesus. It's not a platitude. It's a blessed truth. So there's no need to panic. Arthur Larson put it this way. Don't look within and be depressed. Don't look without and be distressed. Look to Jesus and be at rest. Gordon Jensen wrote these words in a song which I have on my iTunes. In the very thought of Jesus, his presence can be found. He's as close as the mention of his name. There is never any distance between my Lord and me. He's as close as the mention of his name. In my hour of struggle, so many times I found he's as close as the mention of his name. Just to breathe the name of Jesus can turn everything around. He's as close as the mention of his name. I found that to be true. Have you? I was stressing about something years ago when a girl in my youth group said, Nancy, remember what you tell us to do? Oh. <laughs> Oops. Right. Stop. Just stop and breathe in and breathe out the name of Jesus several times. Friends, that's why we need each other. I needed that girl in my youth group to remind me. Right? We need each other to remind each other that Jesus promised presence and peace is ours. He's always there. It's just that sometimes I forget and sometimes I need to breathe in his name and recognize his presence with me. And it calms me right down. How many times? Every time. It doesn't change the outward circumstances. Again, that's not the promise. The promise is that he will be with us and give us his peace in the midst of those circumstances, in the midst of the chaos of our lives. And if we're all honest, all of us have chaos in our lives to one degree or another. The world gives us half-truths and outright lies. Jesus gives us true and everlasting peace. Let me say that again. The world gives us half-truths and outright lies. Jesus gives us true and everlasting peace. And we know it's true because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. In Valermo, California, Benedictine monks converted a 400-acre ranch into a religious community called St. Andrew's Priory. Upon entering the grounds, there's a sign that says the land is posted. It reads, no hunting except for peace. Friends, our world is hunting for peace. And whether the world knows it or not, it is hunting for the promised presence of of Jesus Christ. It is only in Jesus that true peace comes. May we continually point those around us to Jesus so they too can know the peace that only He can bring. Kristen, what do we think about the video? Okay. We're going to try a video here.
When there's no peace on earth, there's still peace in Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your promised presence with us through your Holy Spirit. May we claim your promise that you will not leave us orphaned or desolate or comfortless. And may we share this blessed truth with those around us. And in so doing, know the true freedom and peace that only you can bring. We pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, our source of peace. Amen. I neglected to make an announcement. I'm sorry. It's all on me anyway. Uh, yesterday we had a gathering downstairs, and we have some snacks and coffee and hot tea. It was left over that we wanted to share with you. So please come downstairs and have some snacks. I don't want to take it all home. Okay. okay. Now please rise as you're able and sing it for our final hymn, hymn number 2215, Cares Chorus. It's a short hymn, so we will be singing it through twice.
Thank you. 